Arrow functions are not just about concise syntax. So often when we talk about arrow functions, we praise its concise syntax. However, there is another feature of arrow functions that is often overlooked, and we call that feature lexical this binding. Welcome to another tutorial from All Things JavaScript, where we help bridge the gap between novice and expert. To be notified about new tutorials, make sure to click that bell button and subscribe. Also, check out the discount links to all my courses that I've included in the description of this tutorial. This binding, or determining the value of this in JavaScript, can be a confusing topic. In fact, in my advanced topics course, I spend several topics just discussing this binding and what value this will contain. Normally, the value of this refers to an object, and its value is set at the time of function invocation, the time a function is called. So the value is implicitly bound at that time by the JavaScript engine. There are also ways to explicitly bind the value of this, meaning you determine its value, but that is beyond this discussion. Now, with the advent of arrow function, there comes a third way the value of this is set. We call that lexical binding. And this type of lexical binding can best be explained with an example. This is an example that one of my students asked me about a short time ago. Now, in this example, I'm going to be talking about the prototype of objects. So if you need a refresher on that topic and the topic surrounding it, I will link to a playlist in the description. To illustrate the difference between implicit this binding and lexical this binding, I'm going to create an object and assign a prototype to it. So first, let me set up the prototype object. I'm going to call that proto obj. And basically, it's going to have a method inside of it. And it's going to be simple. I'll define the method using concise methods. Basically, all it will do is put the first name of an object together with the last name of an object. And it will return that value. So there is the prototype. Now let's set up an object. So obj equals, and all we're going to have in this object is first name. I'll set that to my name and last name. That's all that will be in it. Now, in order for this method to be accessible from this object, we need to assign this as a prototype of this object. Okay. So that's the next thing I'm going to do. Now, there's a couple ways you can do that. I'm going to use the set prototype of method. And in order for that to work, we have to pass in the object and we have to pass in the prototype object. And basically, it will assign this as the prototype of that. That's how that's going to work. All right, so we have that set up. Now let's go ahead and take a look and see what happens when we invoke this method from this object. So I jump to the console here, obj dot full name, and it returns with the first name space last name. Now, the value of that prototype is I can create multiple objects and use the one prototype to assign that method to them. So if I take it, so if I create a second object, like this, we'll put a different name. And then if I go ahead and assign a prototype to that as well. So I'll just copy this line here.
then both those objects have access to that prototype method. So now I can do obj1 dot full name and we get the full name from that as well. So that works great. Now let's bring in this whole concept of implicit versus lexical this binding. Right now this is being bound implicitly. So the value of this is being bound when we invoke the method. So because we're invoking it from this object, that is what the this binding becomes. It becomes obj1. When we invoke it from the obj object, the implicit binding becomes obj. And so that's why this works to be able to return the first name and the last name from both of these objects is because of that implicit this binding. All right, now we're going to make a change here. I'm going to comment out that definition and now I'm going to define this with an arrow function. So set up our arrow function here. This first name plus and then spaces concatenate this dot last name. Okay. So there is the same method, but this time it's defined using an arrow function. Let's go and see what that has done now. So I'll save that. And let's go ahead and invoke obj.fullName. We get undefined, undefined. Um, oh, that was for obj1. Now with obj, we get the same thing. So we're not getting the information we need. And that is because with an arrow function, this is lexically bound. Meaning this is bound to the outer lexical environment. Lexical meaning what we have entered. So this is what we have entered. This is the outer lexical environment. So it's going to get the global object as the value of this as opposed to these. So we can take a look at that really quick by simply, let's uh, add another line to our method here. Console log, and we'll just log the value of this. And then we'll return like that. and then finish that off. So now let's go ahead and run that and see what we get. So we can do either obj or obj1. And notice what console log gives us. It gives us the window object. And so it was the outer lexical environment. So it was bound lexically. That This value becomes the outer lexical environment. And that is a difference between the implicit binding that normally happens with a method defined in an object and the lexical binding that happens with an arrow function. Now, in the next tutorial that we'll do, we'll look at where this is valuable. Right now, we've seen where this can cause a problem, but we'll look at where this is valuable. And basically, when it comes to this binding, arrow functions are great for callbacks and nested functions, but not so good for constructors and methods. All right, before we are done here, please hit the like button. And remember, I've provided discount links to all my courses in the description section. If you would like to become a patron of this channel, there are additional benefits to certain levels. You can follow a link in the description for that. You can also contribute by visiting my website. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that button or click the circle link on the left, the one with my face. Also click the bell button to be notified about new releases. I release a new tutorial each week. You can click the video link in the center to access another tutorial right away or click the link on the right to visit my website allthingsjavascript.com for a complete list of tutorials and courses. Thanks for watching.